Look what I've got, guys! Flyers! Yay! We're in game one of these videos! So I'm going to be looking at these videos, see what... Well, look at these flyers, the Lib Dems, the Conservative, and the UKIP one. Well, didn't expect to see that one out of existence. The UKIP, Lib Dems, and SNP and Tories. That's, that's pretty much it. But we're going to be looking at these. This is for the Mollyshire area, as the election is in tomorrow, or you see this video, it is a result, and this is my opinion for the election results as they come to be on here. I'm not going to show my face because I can't be asked doing things off of the camera, so let's go. So, I thought I'd take a good look at the... Well, you can't do this over on technology standards, you only have pieces of paper to go through. So, I thought... We're, I've not actually made a lot of content recently about, you know, the general election and all that, because I'm so fucking damn sick of it. I am really, I'm fed up with it. I'm just like, this is Brexit, NHS, Boris Trump, oh my god. So, I thought I'll do the thing I wanted to do in the European electoral election thing, and go and look at the little pieces of paper that he sent through the door. You don't need this one. Um, so we thought I'd take a look at what we have on choice. Now, I, I don't really care about this area a lot, but I thought I'd uh, go through this one with Douglas Loss first. I mean, I'm going to make my opinion clear about everyone on this page, and I'm not really targeting these people personally. And this is only what I'm getting from these sheets of paper that you see in front of you here. Right? Just to make things clear. And if from past history and so on, I will reflect it in this video. So, Douglas Ross. God's sake. Um, not such a bad... I mean, it's the Conservative Party, so... You know, people aren't so happy with it, but I'm pretty happy with the Conservative Party just now. But I would rather go and vote for the Brexit party. But Nigel says vote tactically. Now, I'm not the big fan of Douglas Loss. I mean, I would love to see all these people in person. It wouldn't be such a problem with me. But the one thing that annoyed me about Douglas Loss was the fact that he wanted to put a thing where new drivers what had to go 45 miles an hour and do all the stupid little stuff so they wouldn't end up in accidents. It's Leo, it's in the PNJ somewhere with Douglas Laws once lower uh, people, it's just stop people from dying in car crashes because I believe in the Malaysia area there was a really bad car crash out of, and I think I remember who it was, but it's in my local area so I was like, it was really devastating for that to happen. And I think there was a, quite a few down south that all just happened on the same day. Crazy. And then he offered this thing about 45 miles an hour for the new drivers. Why, why single out the new drivers, Kane? It's not them that's causing the problems. It's the ones who end up driving the cars and going fast and they think, oh, we can do everything, and then they crash and they end up dying. It's not really fun. So, we're not on about that. That was the one thing I didn't like about Douglas. But this was the first letter I actually got through my door. This was when I was living with my granny, so that's why it's so scroll, dude. So let's see what he wants to say. And this was sent to me when? Yeah, this was just so I could like get some sort of promotional vote for him. I had a game, what the hell. Um, I don't know, this was given to me quite a while ago. Can't mind when. I'd say a good few months ago. So, what does this he, he say here? A general election has been called, ah, this is when it was, and Molly looks like it's a very close, like last time, because that's true. It was very close to SNP and the Conservatives, respectively, in their own spot, but the Tories won. The Tories won. So I'm given that. Thank God. I mean, what happened afterwards was a bit questionable, but okay. Anyway, it would be a straight fight between me and the SNP candidate, which would be... Laura Mitchell here. Don't know who that is. Um, anyway, I know the last general election, many people have, local people who have not always voted Scottish Conservative and Unionist in the past, then while the voters, because they wanted to stop the SNP, and I'm still grateful for that. Well, that is actually the most thing about Scotland to vote. 
Um, if anyone was to lead about what the hell's going up in Scotland with a vote, I mean, England's got its own problems. That's why a lot of people in Scotland wouldn't, who voted Labour the first time, or SNP, or, you know, Lib Dems, they would rather have, well, actually, to get rid of the SNP, they would rather have, oh, sorry, they would rather get a Conservative candidate instead of the the SNP candidate, because no one wants Nicola Sturgeon's independence left for them, which you mentioned here. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Given how close the election will be, who will support again, and the support of every locally who wants to be Brexit supported and Scotland remain within the United Kingdom if the SNP has stopped in Mully. Yes, because Mully is one of the key locations Despite we get neglected a lot by the Scottish Government, which I fucking hate a lot, the fact that the Tory Government was given, you know, proposition to do so much stuff, but the SNP Government was the overall majority and the actual money that was given to them, never happened. Remember, we're still in a seventh deficit here, so it doesn't work. Um, the stakes couldn't be higher. Nicola Sturgeon has made it clear that she would put a holding another in Scottish independence uh, referendum at the very heart of this election. This is why people are voting Tory instead. This is why I'm still questioning if I want to vote for them or not. She's been holed out time again and again, and, and we, again, we don't want another referendum or independence, and now we all need to tell her again. Yeah, because this woman does not understand referendum results. Because I believe she said, and Alex Salmon said at the time, just the fact that she just doesn't accept the result is exactly why there's a main problem in Parliament and this is why the Tories voted for this in the first place because no matter what the hell was going to conclude in what was going to happen he, Boris was never going to get anything to happen and as long as the SNP had a strong mandate up in the north it was not going to work. So there's every chance as Luf Davidson's gone this could be a thing. So it's also clear for me the vote then years and years of division that keeps Scotland within the United Kingdom vote. A vote is among the local lists of the SNP winning here in Mully and another unwanted and damaging independence referendum. Yes, we, we know that was the big problem the last time. And as uh, I'll show you in the thing here, which is actually true, I did check it up. The Tories have quite a big majority with Douglas Ross in the area. This is how they won in the general election last time, 45, 47.5% with a massive jump ahead of nearly 10 points from the S&P. And then just Labour is nowhere with 10.9 and the Lib Dems is only 2.3 because we know Lib Dems do not support on this offer. Now I might as well if we talk about the Tories, talk about the, look at this one here from the Douglas Ross. Like we said, keep lab the Lib Dem and Labour's down there, and the SNP will be the big majority of offer. And that's it. Uh, it's a thick, it's a thick piece of paper. Weird. Um, the only vote for Douglas Sauce can stop Nicholas Sturgeon independence after the end of two, which is true, because people don't want this to happen. Nobody wants the second independence after the end of. We're so sick of the Brexit one. What do you think is going to happen when we have five more bloody elections because Nicola Sturgeon doesn't want to happen? This will be her message to get the fuck out of this. And we haven't even gone to the SNPs yet to see if they, what they're saying is true. Sturgeon said she's going to demand a second effort then the as she held the next year. If she wins seat in Mully on the 12th of December, she'll claim the it's a green light for her plans for the referendum. Now, I know there's people in the area that do support independence referendum. That's fine. That's fine, but I'm not going to go for that. Stop the referendum. Everyone's opposed to a vote against it. Together we can stop it together and badly, 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 badly stop independence too. And we know how that goes. Because, well, what's the, what's the point of those? Because, well, for me personally, it's more of a choice between the Brexit party and the the... Top, the uh, the Conservatives, but this was a one I was surprised to even see that showed up on this one, which was, weird enough, UKIP with Robert Scorn. Scorn? Yeah, 
Don't like an ice amoeba. Dear voter, Britain is, needs to rebuild a long neglected fishing industry. Yes, this is why Boris Steel was in very much of a favour up here. Continue. Uh, leave the common agricultural policy and return to control of these industries to people who understand them best. Us! Pretty much. For many, for more than three years, Britain has been thrown to manufactured hysteria that seeks to divide the culture of our values. We must bring common sense back into politics and policies. Let children be children, focus building a uh, great future for all. Vote UKIP on 12th of December by this guy here. Now, I've, I can see what he's aiming at here. He's aiming at something that I was actually interested in the idea, so I do apologise if I said that a bit long. I do lead fast and don't even register myself what I'm saying. Because it's like the SNP wanted the last time to use children, 16 year olds, to vote. I'm not saying they don't know what they're voting for, but it's a manip manipulative game which they're trying to use because kids would just go for it. No wonder they tried Labour tried to do this to them for this general election. It was crazy, and the Lib Dems tried to do that too. Crazy. Because, I mean, the last time the independence referendum, I voted for the independence referendum. We lost. I accepted it. But I felt being used as a tool because I didn't realise I had a little blue book, right? But I had a blue book and it was like, wow, I'm getting used as a fucking tool here. And I was a 16-year-old idiot. I'll claim that for myself at the time. So what does he offer? Because I have nothing on the Brexit party, just a UKIP one. I'm surprised UKIP's still alive. Because uh, the, according to Count Dankula, the UKIP party is pretty much fucked. It's, it's, there's good people in there that trust the values, but they don't, they're not all that's in charge. So, this is kind of a weird one to come here. So what does Britain need to deliver a clean Blake Brexit? Perfectly acceptable, get out on WTO terms, not on this thing. Less mass immigration, I hate this, if the other situation here which is put on, is put our NHS before fallen aid, yes. Now, this is the thing people don't talk about a lot, is the NHS on the fallen aid. Yeah, obviously. Um, well, that's weird. the great weird thing is, the reason that we give so much fallen aid out, and David Cameron did add it on to be 0.7, arsehole for doing that. Um, well, it's actually by the UN telling us you should give out fallen aid to this countries of people, but we know what happens when we give our foreign aid to these third world countries, not saying we shouldn't, know, but they just go straight to the politicians with all the money and the booze and the drink and the, the girls and luxurious accommodations and people still live in the mud huts. Great. You know, that that's why it does not work. Any change needs to be supported full on stop. Full on stop. But the thing is, the NHS needs to be manned properly. You can give it all the money in the world, it needs to be looked after and guided properly. And, you know, make sure these things actually work. You have a hospital to run, so the ones that don't take the responsibilities of how things go, and I also believe this is part of the immigration too, because we have a free immigration system, which is like, hey, you can come here and get the free healthcare that we all pay our taxes for, but you don't live in this country. That's the fucking problem. I'm going to say that there. That's the one main problem with that issue there. It annoys a lot of people. Right. Next one before I get the long subject. Sark liar, liar politicians. <laughs> well, that's pretty much everyone in the... That's 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 everyone, so I'm not really going to come out of that spot hole. Scott, the TV... The BBC licence fee... Yes, we all hate paying that £150, which I just paid the other day, and I fucking hate it. And the BBC will realise very quickly, if this was to ever get through, because I believe um, Boris Johnson suggested this, the Brexit party did as well, it looks like UKIP is doing the same thing, um, to get the licence, because no one really wants to pay this licence. 
I think we're the only few country in the world that actually pays a TV license. And then when we watch what we get on the BBC, it's more propaganda, gender-based politics. Remember, BBC did actually do a thing where they would hire more people based on their gender, not for their qualification. That's not a joke. Ban on stun slaughter. Now that's one of I had to stop the video and make sure what the hell that was. And it was like, it's it's what I thought it was. Uh, the ban to actually ban on slaughter, which is, um, I'm not sure if anyone actually knows it, but I'm assuming farmers are very quite familiar with it in the area. Um, you know, stunning the animal and then killing them off. Kind of merciless, and in my view, or a little bit, a bit, I don't know what's the word, not very fair on the animal, I would say. But at least there's a petition on the Gov website of 14,000 petitions to say, you know, don't do this. I mean, really? Stun the animal for killing it? I guess they have their reasons, but I'm not a farm expert, so done. Defend veg values and free speech. Well, your party does a great job on that, so does the other ones. Right. Who do we have next? Well, actually, might as well. We talked about them before, and we talk about them now. Miss Laura Mitchell for the candidate of Mullyshire. Weird thing. It says on the back here, I was born and raised in Keith and now live in Elgin. I've never met you in my life. Who are you? But then I did see a video of uh, some campaign thing, and she got a bunch of people to... For, for the SMP and it's kind of didn't like it very much. Uh, vote for the SMP, not going to happen for me, but let's go and see what she offers us because she's got a book. Oh, God's sake. Um, that's my priorities for, for Murray. Well, this is going to be a good one. Stopping the Westminster Brexit chaos. Not in my interest. Protect our NHS from preservation. Well, if you give the NHS a little bit more money, then just because it's a Tory area, it might go a bit far. Scotland's like decided their own future. We already did that, so fuck off. Uh, tackling the climate emergency. You've only listened to that because Greta Thunberg told you, and now she wants to take capitalism and colonialism away from people. Now she'd lead it up. It's a real thing. So I don't know why everyone gets so mad about this climate change bullshit. Yeah, that's my opinion on it. Opposing the totally sell out of fishing and farming. I get that. That's what Boris's deal does. But you're still not worthy because you just don't care about what the hell's going to be going on with your area, do you? Because fishing and farming. I don't even remember Bucky has all the fucking boats left. Let alone this. And Scottish Government has been in charge for how many years up in the north? And I think the decline of boats have went down significantly well below the need. And I believe it's in the whole of Scotland, not just in Mully itself. Um, what's it got to say? Please just support online. Yes, we know who you are. Uh, protecting Mully and Space Light's food and drink is industry. Well, Mully Cup. R.I.P. to you, pal. Shame. Ending totally honesty and cuts. Well, that would help if you gave them the money to do it, but the thing is, Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire and Mullyshire were totally areas, and it was proven that you didn't even give them the money, and then soon as the SNP took over the Mullyshire area for them fucking up the money system, which I'm still haven't quite figured out whose fault that was. You, Nice to point fingers, but I blame government because the money goes to Hollywood, then comes up to us, and then these two areas suffer in the long run. That's why they need to be a bigger toy of support. Anyway, um, and the, oh yeah, because that's what happened. Not a lot of people know this, that look online, but... Um, the to the Mully, the to it was held at Tory area, then it had a massive bankruptcy and it was all completely fucked. And it was like, earlier has been cut off, everyone was looking at it on their phones, it was like, wow, all the areas have been cut off of funding, of cutting, gl just cutting glass, 
you know, doing all the basic stuff because they were paying all the stuff because I think they decided to build a new sports center for no reason. But I believe that was taken on the continuation of the SMP, which was said we need to build this sports area because Elgin needed one. But it doesn't because there's already one there. And we need to build a new school as well. When there was a need for it because there's already five fucking schools in the area already in the whole Mully. So you don't need to worry about that much. That's when your money cuts end up coming in. And there was also that thing about the Lossy Bridge. The Lossy Bridge. Now, it was, a, it was a local landmark for tourists. I mean, like you come to Mully for tourism? Well, um, it was a little bridge on the Lossy bit. Which, um, it was, it's a, it's a great old bridge. It's owl, it's fun. I mean, I loved when I was going there when I was younger. It's owl. It's just all wooden. And then they finally commissioned it shut to say, it's dangerous, you can't go on it. And then it's, it's a, it's a heart mark of a lossy mouth. So it's a bit, it's sad to see it go. But it was like the toy government said, oh, we can't afford to do this. But then again, it was the same time it was the SMB who took over, and then they said they couldn't do it, so you can't blame the toys for that. Because no people probably don't know this area isn't held by Tory government just now, it's owned by SMP, and they are trying their best to tell everyone we're doing a better job than the Tories are. But the thing is, as soon as you came into power, the money tree just magically fucking appeared. The loads were getting done, those that sports centre was getting finished off, that school was getting finished off, all this stuff just magically fucking appeared, didn't it? Anyway, demanding justice for Mullies, there must be women in better penditions. Not sure what that was, because I didn't even know there was a thing up here. Uh, standing up for local defence jobs. Yes, because Ken Loss, Lossy Mouth, um... You know, there used to be two RAF bases, uh, Kin RAF Kin Loss and uh, uh, Lossy Mouth. There was going to be a shutdown of those military bases because it wasn't needed. It's needed because we had to send those fighter jets up to the northeast to defend ourselves against those Russian ships that keep showing up all the time. Crazy. I mean, I don't know why they thought they could do that. And then they cut the... I mean, this was over time, so don't just blame it on a party. Uh, they cut it, um, the kin loss, it became a barracks, a military barracks. So I was like, that's great, but there should be more effort towards the military in the area. Just saying. Um, campaigning for fair delivery charges. Yeah, um, that was the Scottish government who did that bit. So you can't blame the Tories for that one, because apparently... The North East counts as the Highlands and Islands where you have to pay an extra fiver for your Amazon only in fucking package now. Which is stupid. Because the Highlands and Islands is a dedicated area where Inverness and the Highlands and Islands are if you look at the map. It's not Mullyshire or Aberdeenshire but they decide to count it as the same area. Which is weird. So, let's go take a look at this bomb bit. Um, S&P is going to deliver to Mully. Oh, okay. Investing over 15 million in the place and the Furbish local schools. You did that already. And you already told us this was an EU funded project for the one in Keith, which is a primary school which got built. It's a really, really good school. What you should have really done was take out down the old grammar school, which happened in the past. And actually, you know, change that school instead, or change the Elgin schools instead, instead of just building a whole new school. It's stupid. Plus, your education funding is fucking abolishing. The UK is appalling when it comes to the amount of money that's been spent on schools. And you're actually proud to give more stuff to the schools now? Are you flipping kidding me? Fucking Christ. <sighs> Delivered over 5,000 new homes and communities across Mully. Okay, so as there's a lot of houses trying to get built, contracts are getting screwed over by uh, S&P not giving enough money to the contractors like Springfield and so on in the area. And then you build 5,000 new homes, right? I don't know about you, 
But if I look at the park outside, I used to hear an area called the Den, right? There was a place beside it, it was full of green, it was full of that. And then climate emergency there, it all gets bulldozed for hooses. And then I'll go back to this again, for the new hooses. Emigration's the fucking problem here, because you end up taking more folk into the area, and then all the local people, all the old grannies, you just want them to die off. That's that's what you want, don't you? So you can get those votes for your independent Scotland shit, isn't it? Anyway, investing hundreds of millions in A96 dueling Leo links and Molly Grove deal. You should have done that 20 years ago. 20 flipping years ago. And do I not remember that A96 dueling was a really bad idea? But they were going to do it anyway because the Scottish government said we're going to do that anyway. And the Scotland said we're going to invest more on the train tracks anyway. I mean, Scotland screwed. We know that it's screwed. But. Really? Oh, look, funding the new Lossy Bridge. Let's, just, let's get some privilege points here. Because the toys couldn't do it, but they can. That's what happens. Oh, it's so fucking obvious. I didn't even realise this was in here. Um, let's see. Let's see how the do the toys are damaging everything. I mean, I'm not going to give them all credit, but, you know, these guys up here. Sorry. These guys up here, they deserve that shit. Not her. She doesn't deserve any of that. She just supports that faction. I just don't like the faction. That's it. Um, toys. Toys are damaging Molly. I mean, a decade of toy cuts and all this. So you have pushed local families into poverty. Yes, but people have priorities themselves to look after themselves, as well as the, the government trying to f help them and fund them out. Um, Molly's older population see one of the worst pensions in Europe. Well, why do you? Why does the Scottish government keep telling everyone the pension scheme in Scotland is actually the best compared to England? That's a bit weird. Uh, the toy kit. Candidates supported the UK cuts, including 28% in council funding. Yes, we know that, but you also don't give a lot of funding to the Tory areas that was held by Aberdeen and Mully. Mully was the big one, which was a quiet contributor to that. So you can't just blame them, you are blamed to that as well. Putting Boris Johnson ahead of the people of Mully? Is that because he came here first? Really? He goes, he came to Mully first, and I was like really proud to see the Prime Minister. He came up to Mully first, an eclectic spot, and then he was like taken over by SMP. But he, the Prime Minister came up to here first. Came what I mean? It's, um, who in the, who's putting Boris Johnson before the people of Mully? See if I go on the street and I ask a bunch of people, are you supporting uh, Boris Johnson before you support your grandmother or your husband or your wife. You know how stupid that sounds in the long run? Very crazy. So let's go see a look at a candidate here. I mean you can't see it properly here but um, Dear Voter, I was born and raised in Keefe. I now live and work in, the, in Elgin. Obvious. I'm a finance... Okay, Chazim. I, I can't read stuff. Um, I know what matters to Molly. A place of proud to call my home. Okay, because I can't do that. Uh, election 12th of December is most important. Chaos of what seen Westminster of that past few years of now badly were being led down by the Tories. That's because you guys don't like the Tories at all. So it doesn't help there. And um, they have a bigger majority in Scotland. But as long as we can get this poll to stay like that and that to go down there, it's same as them too. And it's fine. It's fine. Um, I can't tell you. Toys can't be trusted, Navy can you, stop the vote from Boris in his tracks, stop the Westminster, st let Scotland vote that choose its future, and so on, so on, so on, we've all heard it before. Now, I just wanted to like, point out a small uh, thing that happened in uh, Mully recently. There was a local election done recently, which I was expecting was between the, I believe, an indep the independent one, independent... Tory, SNP, and Lib Dem. Labour wasn't on these sheets. And it was, it was surprising on what the actual results would end up being. Funny enough, the Tory candidate won. 
Well done to the wifey who won that earlier there for Keith and Cullen. So, the begs the question, is the Tollies still in Mully still likeable? Because we know the Keith and Cullen earlier, and the Keith and Cullen earlier is really, really liked by the SMP. But for them to lose? Quite extraordinary in my remarks. But, never know. See what happens. Now, we've only got two left. We've only got the, the Labour one, sorry, the Labour and the Lib Dems. <laughs> this is going to be a fun choice. Right, so now we can get a good look at the uh, Liberal Democrats and the Labour one. Now, I'm not sure which one I want to do first. Well, we'll leave the best to last, so let's go and have a slam at Labour. So, who do we have? Joe Clibby. Never seen you before. The Leo alternative, for the many, not the few. <clears throat> yes, that means by higher taxes, higher revenue, and higher income. You know, people that earn more money, own businesses, will get taxed just as much as the 5% will. Okay, okay, we've only got a few pages. So, let's see what this Labour manifesto says, because we know none of it makes sense anyway, but let's just try it anyway. <clears throat> See if this actually relates to the area at all, because I don't think Labour's been in charge for how many years in this area? I wonder why. <laughs> Mully is one of the lowest wage areas in Scotland. There are too, too few high skilled jobs and few two opportunities for young people. Labour will transform the economy, investment, and job skills, and infrastructure. Yes, that tends to be a problem throughout Scotland, not just in Mully. Because you know how hard it is to get a real job out here? You have to be overly qualified to do the job because the companies down here don't really want you to do the extra mile or try and learn. It's a nightmare. Why do you think I've been stuck in a, a short blade factory for six years? Jesus. Labour will protect pensioners. Well, not according to your scheme that you did before. Because you were actually going to pay, make people pay up to a thousand pound a month for your for your pension scheme, you know, not towards the pensioners to the tax funds. So that's shite on the fact there alone. But what's this to say here? The toy scrap TV license, free TV license for pensioners and S and P refuse to use powers. The Parliament do anything about it. Exactly, that is a true thing. Mm -hmm. Scottish government does not want to do anything about it because they're in power, but they don't like who's in the areas, so they just say, we're not going to help you. This is why the Scottish government is a fucking waste of time. Let alone the Westminster one. Anyway, uh, Labour will say free TV licenses over the 75s, as well as protecting the pension triple lock. I like how they're all trying to do the TV license thing. <laughs> You're not going to win us on that fucking level. I'm sorry. Labour promises you everything, but they'll take everything back in the turn. Labour will give you a f the final say. The only... <laughs> okay, this is, this is going to be a good one. The only way to break the Blake's a deadlock is to move on and let the people decide. We did that three fucking years ago! Anyway, Labour will negotiate a new deal that p protects workers and the environment and let them, let the people decide what they want to leave or those terms or the main. So it's the main or the main because you want to be part of the customs union, you want to be um, part of the chain of movement, you want to stay close as you can to the European Union. That isn't leaving, that's just the maining in a different form. It's just like what we've been stuck to for the last 40 years. No a change or the main. It's stupid. How much we're all sick of this Brexit scenario and why the hell do we you want us to make more votes on something that you're not very big fans of? Like Boris Johnson has said, he doesn't even know who you know who's actually supporting Leave on your team. No one actually does, do they? Unlike this guy, oh wait, he doesn't either. So, how the hell does that make any sense? 
So, why am back in Joe Kirby? Well, don't know who this guy is, but okay. Uh, as a local teacher, Joe has spent almost 20 years helping young people in Mully get ahead of life. Joe's decision, dedication to helping others and st standing up for ordinary Mully folk is exactly what we need for a local MP. But the thing is, we know what party it is. We don't support Scottish Labour. Because Scottish Labour, yes, they don't support the Independence referendum. But they don't support the Brexit one either. And what, how the hell do you trust a candidate that doesn't even want to believe in what the people say? And this argument of Scotland wanting to be part of the European Union? Well... It doesn't look like Nicholas Sturgeon wants to suspect 17.4 million people, including myself, because a lot of areas in Scotland were just that 1,000 people off, which was a half and half, on a lot of the election votes that's been going on so far. So what the hell with that? Uh, let's see here. Don't need really need to do that stuff. We know what the hell that's going to be. Well, I'll just leave it anyway. Our schools, hospitals and public services have been neglected for long, too long. Yeah, because that's called money. Money is a big problem. There used to be a bus service for the pensioners from New Mill to Keith, and then them to Elgin. Didn't happen. Hasn't happened like ten years, at least. It used to be easy for the pensioners, but now they're all dying off. So you may be happy about that now. Um, I promise to protect Molly residents first and foremost. Is that the ones before the immigration ones come in, or the ones after they come in? I'm assuming they don't actually live and work in this country. They just don't do that. Um, I'm committed to fighting the services upon which are relying on the addressing NHS and education staff shortages. I will continue to work on the community to tackle poverty and its impact on children and young people and families live here, support and growth in the local economy provide better opportunities, not just for a few, but for everyone in Mully. And by that means, you're going to nationalise everything, and then after all that, it's all going to screw over anyway, isn't it? Because you're screwing everyone else with taxes, that's on the high heavens, where we have the, and my little payslip is going to need to be two payslips for the amount of taxes you're going to be taking off. Thank God I'm not married, eh? Marriage tax, my ass. You promise a lot, but we know you're lying. It's 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 like Jeremy called. We know you're lying, so don't even bother. I my plea just to you. <laughs> my recommendations. I think I would rather see. Um, invest in local jobs. There's nothing here anyway. So how the hell are you going to make more businesses? Jesus. Invest in transport. We need the full Julian A96 as well as investment in trains. Well, Scott, they already said they were going to do that, so... Okay. Put passengers before profit. Buses back in the public hand. Free travel for under 25. So that's a national... That sounds like a national idea. Nationalisation on buses. That's great. More money. Because... You know, stagecoaches do does a good enough job themselves with a nice cheap fare of five pounds and ten pounds a turn between Aberdeen and Venice, quite good. Something like that. Protect tax credits. Help the working families protect from the Tory cuts. The, what Tory cuts? What cuts? We know Hollywood is actually the ones who's in charge of all the money that comes up to the North East, so how the hell can you blame them? Anything that comes up to the North is goes through the Scottish Government and then it goes to the other areas. That's how it works. This is why you want to vote powers, is it not? SMP. But it looks like that doesn't work either. Looks like a North and South divide in Scotland itself. So what the hell's the point in that? I spent the whole of my life working in to prove lives better with others, that's what the guy said before. Both as a teacher and my working against poverty, and I hope to continue to fight against poverty, equal 
Parliament. Well, your party needs to do a lot more. Joe, your party needs to do a lot more than what's proposed on this flipping leaflet here. Because your party is not the party. You're promising everything. You promise everything, Scottish Labour. But you're not a unionist. You don't want this country to stay together. You just want second referendum. You do, despite the amount of people that say they don't. You want to screw this over and see how it fucking goes. Not exactly the best way to go about it. I don't really trust your leader, Jeremy Corbyn, anyway. So what's the actual point? Right. Let's go and look at the Scottish Liberal Democrats. You know, the ones that have Liberal Democrats. Stop Brexit. Stop independence. Fight for a better future. So build a better future. A brighter future. I can't even, even say the words like, because it doesn't even... It's, it's not even true on the piece of paper. I can't even read it properly. I like how you... Like, okay, I like this bit here. Like, lib, the Scottish Liberal Democrats. You know, Liberal Democrats. So that means democracy, yeah? So we stopped the Scottish Brexit. And, sorry, we stopped Brexit. You know, completely revoke Article 50. Completely revoke 70.4 million people's votes and start riots. And then stop independence too. Now that would not be a favour of a lot of people. And this is probably why your polls went down. Plus your leader, Joe Swindon, is very unlikable. But the guy in Scotland is likeable. Or oh, like 2% difference. But if you look at this perspective. If you're a Liberal Democrat, I would expect you to respect the vote. Because I, I remember there was a guy who was telling me I'm going to vote Liberal Democrats. And I'm like, why, why are you voting Liberal Democrats? They just want to get rid of the SNP. I'm like, perfectly reasonable. I want to get rid of the SNP too. Just to stop this independence of them happening. But if you look at from here, they don't want to respect the vote for this one. And they don't want to respect the vote for this one. Oh wait, this one already happened. And they already said no. So that's it. Simple as. So let's see. What, oh my god, we have a fucking novel here. Wow. But we've got a novel of books and pages and everything. Let's go and take a look at... Oh, God. This is a good start. Joe Swindon, the leader of the Liberal Democrats, the leader of the Clown Party, the, the Clown's Party. You know, Crusty the Clown must be part of this lot somewhere. Joe Swindon won the Liberal Democrats leadership in July, which the other guy did instead. Um... She became the first woman, the youngest person to hold the position. I guess she give you an award for that, but she's not very likable in her own party. Jo Swindon was the youngest MP and she won her seat in 2005 in East Dumbenshire. Hope I'm saying that right. As a business minister between 2012-2005, she successfully introduced the shared potential leave and chopped down on uns as payday loan leaders. Sorry if I'm saying that long. Um, as a Scottish MP, Joe... Oh yeah, she's Scottish. That explains a lot. Um, Joe is committed for keeping Scotland in the UK and the UK and Europe go against the will of the people, I see there. She is ambiguous to plans to win a general election to have a, a better future for the, the country. So, where was the thing where she wanted to become Prime Minister? The fantasy politics? Where did, where did that go? I hope that I hope we get to hear something about the, this woman that's, where, you know, in the Murrayshire area, not just Wyndham, because she's not even in this area. Rebuild, rebuild our economy. Invest in your NHS and the schools and tackle climate change. Yeah, you guys want to charge people for taking the first flight out of the UK because of emission charges? Really? I don't want to pay extra tax because I take the plane three times or if I decide to go on a family holiday. Why the hell should I have to pay extra? Britain is less fair than ever. Yeah, well that's fucking true because everyone's divided multiculturalism and so on and it's really a fucking irritation. And then you've got political class too which is completely divided with the UK. And you liberal terrible clans are not helpful. I lost my train of thought. Britain is less fair than ever. People who work hard and pay, play the rules should be able to get on in their lives. 
but too many of just in isn't in the case today too much opportunities going to everyone with the same skill level just saying um, the Scottish Liberal Democrats will build an economy that works for the rest of everyone and not for the richest well if you don't support the richest if you're going to be like Labour and say oh you earn so much money with a tax year but then how the hell are we going to get businesses from that folk who might provide us a replenishment or a job in that. It doesn't make sense. As I know... Ah, here we go. Fiona Cabell. Campbell. Trevor. Hmm. Let's see what she can do instead of Joe. Because Joe I don't trust at all. And <laughs> she saw her focus group mentioned yesterday. Got a video on that too. Um, as an owner of a small hotel, restaurant, Fiona knows that First hand of impact on Brex on business. Depends. We know businesses don't like the idea of Brexit because of the lack of economy, f following people coming in. But then the thing is, do these businesses also let... Um, this bit here. Um, do, do these people know every time you employ new people that are lazy shits in Scotland that don't even work? They could be working instead. And then you get all the EU nationals doing it instead because they're willing to work. That's the problem with this country. It happens all the way up and down the fucking country. So just to keep that in mind, that's the big problem. The problem with the UK and the election is people. Of every background. Every background. Anyway. Uh, da -da -da. Many of her hotels suppliers come from Mali. From the finest meat and whiskey to safest <clears throat> meat and whiskey to safety oh, say the word finest meat and whiskey to safest consultancy okay we're proud of those areas she understands the concerns of both fishing and farming and will lose the EU nationals as a valued employees in the sectors. We shall fight the shop to stop Brexit. I get I get that the EU nationals are important in this country, but we have a lot of shitholes, assholes that don't even want to work when there's jobs there and then we all have to work for fight for the same levels when all the lazy assholes don't do their thing. And then we have to pay tax for them in debt. Fiona is committed to building a fairer economy. Her hotel was one of the first in Scotland to be fully appreciated by the Leaving Wage Foundation. I bet that was just put in there to make it a little bit more relatable. Remember, Fiona will tackle climate change emergency and installation and transformation of affordable. Fucking hell, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Fiona believes mental health must be taken seriously and... NHS delay must be tackled. Yes, NHS is a fucking disaster, and no one's. This is the first one that's actually talked about mental health. Yeah, because no one seems to care about mental health except the Lib Dems. But the one thing is, they decide to do a thing against the trans community and the LGBTQ community. So I'd like to know where your mental disease comes in at that play. Well done. Let's see. Uh, fresh start for Scotland and the UK. Well. You've, you've had power for how long now? You can even do it then? Fine. Um, the Liberal Democrats are the only party committed to keep it Scotland and the UK and in Europe. So, you're not even willing to respect referendum after referendum. Well, you respect the Scottish independence one, but you just don't respect the UK one. Because we know Joe's husband, Joe's husband here, works for a European company that gets shitloads of money from the EU. So no wonder she supports them. That's probably why the business part, business minister, how that makes all sense here. Just to keep that in mind. Uh, we'll move on the division and hold parties to avoid damaging from the independence. Well, you know, by telling people to shut up and they don't know what they're talking about does not help. Because you're making more divide amongst the people who will make it your enemy. That's the fucking problem. Because people will become your enemy as soon as you tell them they don't know what they're talking about. 
So, tackling climate change emergency. Well, I'm just going to go get Greta Thunberg on this, aren't I? Uh, climate change and air pollution threaten our future. Yeah, you, you've not seen China recently? Yeah, okay. Um, working with the EU enables for us to set high environmental standards to workplace protect our planet. Yeah, have you seen what happens in, with um, what Macron did? Added little taxes for then and then and then for climate change reasons and the whole country's went in riot for a year. It's fun. It's actually nearly just been a full year now of rioting every fucking week. It's not fun when everyone has to pay the extra bit and absolutely screws everyone over. It's kind of like what Labour wants to do in a way, but it's not. Uh, the Liberal Democrats will put Britain on a path of becoming a carbon neutral faster than ever within the investment of saving homes and transport with new forest planted. Forest planted. I mean, I don't mind the idea about getting forest planted because it's ugly seeing a bunch of dead wood all the time. But I just don't see that going to happen because you've changed what you're going to do for the last few times. So it's weird. So, cha challenging the SMB across much of Scotland. So you're not even going to go locally on this one. The SMP, 9%. Lib Dems, 7%. Oh, let's just make sure the Conservatives are minus 6 and Labour is minus 17. Just a nice kick in the bottle. This is probably one of the number of those fake charts that came out. Change the in vote share of the main political parties in European. I wonder if this is anything, anything to do with what this one says here. Mm, general election, Labour, oh look at that, hmm, strange. Oh, I, I wonder if this is anything to go by it as well. You know, this, 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 this is strange, isn't it? Weird. Just, just strange, isn't it? And Lib Dems are winning. Oh, good. We can actually get to see what they want to do, you know, instead of screw everything up. Uh, Lib Dems are winning. No, they're not. Uh, Lib no, they're not. I'm not even going to lead that because that's all lies anyway. So, um, let's see. Choose a fresh start. A bad deal. A Conservative wants to force through an old division of Brexit that will wreck our economy. Well, this election wouldn't happen anyway if the Liberal Democrats just accepted the referendum the first time, same as Labour and SNP. But I guess you don't want to do that anyway. So you're causing more division, causing this guy to cause a general election because you guys want to change the Brexit deal so much that nobody recognises what the deal is. That's why he called the general election so he can get a more majority on his half so he can win. You know, so you can get the deal done and go, it's a bad deal, I don't like the deal, but it's a deal, isn't it? They say well, he wasn't going to do it in three months, and he got that deal. So he did. No idea. Nobody knows where Labour stand on the Brexit or Scottish independence, and they will keep changing their minds and they won't stop. That's true, because nobody knows what he does. And they, there was like that last thing between these two guys, Jamie Corbyn and Boris Johnston, that he says, I have no idea what the hell you're thinking about independence, I'm oh, sorry, I mean uh, Brexit, because he's going to be neutral. The leader cannot be neutral on the subject. I mean, that's why Theresa May was bad, because she was on her main support. That's the one, the one thing we all noticed when she came. And when he became into power, that was the big defining part, when he became in power between him and Jeremy Hunt, I believe his name was. Because Jeremy Hunt was a Remainer and he was a Brexiteer. Despite the bus ca carry on. If you get what I'm talking about, I don't have More to explain chaos. too much. Yes, SNP want to do that anyway, so it doesn't make much difference there. Um, the SNP want more division with another independence referendum, and they won't stop division in our country. Yes, it's exactly true. They all want the fucking referendum because they don't respect the vote. And if you, if Nicola Sturgeon and SNP are not going to respect the 62% that actually voted the main and ignore the other percent. I'm not even going to pay attention to who what the Lemaine's argument is anyway. Make it stop. Liberal Democrats will stop the division in fresh start of the UK and uh, Scotland in the UK and the UK in Europe. It's better 
fair society. Not from what you're providing me, and I don't even have the lead. What else I have the lead for to make sense? You want more division in, in this country than ever before. You want to stop Brexit? 70.4 million fuck you message. You want to stop? You've annoyed everyone with that. You're not a very favourable candidate for winning. This is why you ex you have absolutely tanked in the polls. Down. And there's absolutely no point in trying to redeem yourself on this one. Because the Liberal Democrats don't support democracy. And they don't support Brexit. And they don't support independence. So that, in Scotland, is an absolute waste of time. So, what am I thinking about this so far? Well, you would think I'm more of a Tory man. I mean, I did vote for them the last two times. Molly did actually like where the Keith and Colin Elliott did vote for the Tories last time. Labour asked too much money. Them are unrealistic. You just want to fuck everything up. Not her, just the, the parties themselves. I'm looking at this as parties, not as people, because this is how you have to look at stuff. Um... You want to unite the country. Your party wants to destroy everything we have nationally. Destroy the electoral system. So on. You just don't want anything to happen in, you know, Scotland's general elections. You just don't like anything. You will underfund Tory areas, Labour areas and Lib Dem areas if you ever get a massive majority again. This is why the SNP are not very favourable in Scotland, apart from the people who want independence. Despite the vote already happened and we all already sick of death about referendums. UKIP didn't even know he existed. But it would be them or the Brexit party for me on this little point here. And the Labour. I think I've said something already. Um, Labour. Too much money. Unrealistic. And you want to provide so much stuff. And everyone is going to suffer for it. Even up here. Like it's actually said in here. Lack of jobs. We know there's lack of jobs up here, but the thing is, we can't help it because the area isn't prospering enough and it's not even worth it while. This is why I'm considering going to an area like Aberdeen, Inverness and so on. And kind of, sorry to say, everyone should be thriving to do the same idea. The business, jobs are in the cities, there's more jobs, I know there's zero contract hours, but money just does not provide the effort and need in the Murrayshire area. Because as the Scottish Government does, every time the Scottish Government gets funding of any sort from Westminster, it's a waste of time. Because every time the SNP, which are the main party that's in charge just now, they won't give the money to the areas that will hold their enemies of them and them and them and them. So it's not going to make a difference anyway. That's the one I like about that. Most of what I consider would be... Most of these would all be gone. But as the... I got recently got told the Brexit party will not be here. So, out of this five, what do I have to choose? Well, two seconds. Well, we have SNP, not very favourable. Said that, said that, said that, said that. No, so again. As we know, all the money that goes to Westminster that comes to Holyrood does not get taken to the areas that is provided. Because, well, if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense. Because every time the S&P get money, they want to, want to give so much to the Tory areas that's holded by Tories. They, want to, they won't give it to the Labour, Lib Dem areas, the Labour areas, they don't want to do that. But they'll keep it in their areas and make their areas prosper. But the thing is, when they do that to their own you know, S&P grounds, you regret of what the actual worthless of the money is. But as it comes to be, if the Tories do hell Mully again, that's good. But we cannot have a financial situation that we did before, which somehow nobody seems to remember. It's all forgotten about where the SMB had the kind of help. We cannot afford to do this again. So, what do I want? Oh, no, actually, better question. What is my last two choices? Who am I? Who are this five am I more likely to vote for? Because we know whatever we vote for doesn't make a fucking difference. Even if you lead any of these or lead the news or that, it doesn't make any difference. So, 
Let's go and get rid of some and figure out what we need. Or what I want to choose between. Right, so the only two choices out of all of that I actually consider is the UKIP vote for Robert Scholar and Douglas Ross. Yes, um, got those two choices. Now, Douglas already said today, or vote tactically. So, I was going to vote for the Brexit Party, but the thing is, the Brexit Party does not hold the seats that, you know, Brexit Party does not hold the seat in the Mali area, because the Conservative government won that seat in the last election. So, that won't be happening this time round. So, I believe... On my two choices I have, I think I will vote totally again. Not a big fan of Douglas Ross, but we cannot let the SNP think that the whole country wants to divide itself even further than it is already. Yes, Scottish people want to do it, but there is a bit good majority of people that don't want it to happen ever, either. Because the last time there was a poll, 50-50. We have to kind of trust the polls a wee bit because no one actually leads... Really what the polls actually say, that you know what I'm trying to say there, don't trust the polls, but you know what I'm trying to say, please, please say you know what I'm trying to say here. The Tories are the only ones that want to keep this country as united. This is what I want. I want this country united on a foothold of the world and they claim the purpose that we had this world known as for. We are the great country of Great Britain with the the old countries of Scotland, England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Yes, there will be struggles, but I'd rather have Brexit, my democratic vote, because it's very important to my heart, and also UKIP, as Count Dankula said, they used to be the party that I would support. They would actually still be the considerable option, but no, no, there's just no, no. So, there's every chance I might change my mind tomorrow, but the only two choices I'll have is A and B, but more likely totally to folk tactically, so the, the SNP can get a little kick in the arse and say, we do not want this Scottish independence referendum, because the people already decided the vote. That is it. So, December the 12th, everyone's going to vote. Everyone's going to vote tomorrow. Hope you guys are going to be voting, because I'll be very disappointed. I always believe if you don't vote, you have no real choice of opinion because you don't actually consider putting your ballot through the thing and say, I voted for this opinion here, here, and here. And if you don't even bother to do that, in my opinion, you don't really have an argument basis. I mean, you have freedom to say what you want, but your argument's going to fall very flat, very fast, in my opinion. So, thank you for watching this video. And I'll see you later and see how the election goes. So everyone who watched this video, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you please like, share and subscribe to the channel because the content on this channel is limited to what Google and YouTube would like to show on the internet. And please give a nice thumbs up to the video or if you don't want to do that, just subscribe to the channel. Because notification bells and that will be taken down eventually so on. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video I've made so far. And hopefully catch you on the next one on this channel. Thank you and goodbye. Hail the Empire.